So far, you've scored 17,400 points. You're winning friends and influencing people. Oh, and pizza fact time. Three of the top ten weeks of pizza consumption occur in January. More pizza is consumed during the big game week than any other week of the year, which must be legally referred to as the big game if you do not want to get sued. Do you want to save your game before proceeding to level six? Uh, I'll do it again anyway. Hit the lever. I still don't like that implication that things might go south, but... It is the future year, 20XDX. And my dream has come true. Okay, let's be honest. If you asked me two months ago if my dream involved being the event coordinator at a video, a video arcade, I'd have just stared at you kind of funny. Even now, it sounds ridiculous. But it's true. I'm here. I'm successful. I'm happy. This is my dream. Ever since Funplex Type 2, business has been booming. Funplex is packed with players day in, day out. Kids, teens, the college crowd, the nostalgic ones looking for old games they remember. I've run three events so far. We started rotating our games out of storage and into play to keep things fresh. The high scoreboards are constantly shifting. In fact, things are going so well, Gavin's hinted that maybe we should start looking into a second location. But this will always be home. Seeing the smiles from coworkers and gamers alike, watching my friends laugh and play in good spirits, that's working for me and it's bringing me joy in turn. I won't argue why, in fact, I barely understand why, but I'm happy. And that's better than I've been in years of going with the flow. Going with the flow never brought me this much enjoyment. I'd say by this point, I've suddenly broken the family curse. Maybe everything doesn't have to fall apart from under me. Maybe I can just be happy. Maybe this is where I'm meant to be. And record scratch. Idea, please. Huh? A bicycle messenger dodges a slim envelope my way again, trying to catch my attention. I'm snapped out of my happy little trance immediately. Oh, uh, right. No problem. After jotting down my signature, he drops off the envelope and heads right out, right on out the door. No time for movie or around a pinball, it seems. Deliveries to make. Curious, I open it up. Ego Bun, you are cordially invited. You dine and discuss business matters at Deco's Palace with CEO Deco Nami. Meeting time would be 7 in the evening sharp. You may bring a guest of your choosing. Free Royal Value Swipe Card available for enjoyment of games prior to meeting. What? I read through it a few more times, trying to parse all the curly cues and swirls and swooshes, although that doesn't clear my confusion of the whole matter. Soon, Francine looks up from her knitting, curious about the letter as well, although she seems to have already have an idea what it says. I suppose it's about that time, isn't it? Huh? Deep. Time for that fellow to make another attempt at wooing me. Double, huh? Rather, at wooing my beloved Funplex. Let me guess, Deco Nami of Deco's Palace sent you a fancy invitation with all sorts of fancy writing. That is accurate, yes. It's not the first time. He invited my dear Frederick and I over in 1980X to talk about selling the Funplex, and we turned him down flat. And then in 1990X, when home game consoles were poised to take back the arcade crowd, he suggested we sell, and we turned him down. Now it's 20XDX, and he's at it again. A gentleman would know when to quit, but he's got tenacity, and I can't fault him for that. Why would a big-time arcade operator like Dekonami care that much about us? We're small-time. Oh, uh, no offense. Come now, if anyone should be offended, it's you, calling yourself small-time. Nako, dear, you've put in such work, uh, so much work to make my little arcade soar. I bet that he's knocking on our door again. I bet that's why he's knocking on our door again. We're thriving, and let's load him back in. Like Rhea Cheese in the mouse trap. So wait, are we the cheese or the trap? Oh my. That depends on how clever you are, my dear. Right, so I'm the cheese. Although I prefer to be a nice mozzarella. Cheese steps aside. Uh, do you want me to ignore the invite then? Oh, heavens no. Contrary to what people say about the fellow, he's very much a man of his word. I always accept his invitation, always hear him out. It's only fair and proper. I thought he was like the arcade scene's greatest evildoer. Be sensible. That's a bit grandiose, no? Certainly plenty of rumors of his questionable methods abound, but that's all they are. Rumors. Politeness should be met with politeness. That's how you conduct proper business, and that's what the Funplex is all about. Francine moves from her seat to uh, near, near the ticket desk, but pauses, leaning heavily on the glass countertop while looking strained. 
I move to help, but she waves me away and sits back down. Oh, don't worry about... Oh, no. Oh, no. She's dead by the end of the game. She's gonna die. I thought Percy was the one. I just stood up too quickly. That's all. Just out of breath. But, Nako, I think it'd, it'd be best if you go in my stead. Me? Let's be serious now. These old bones aren't as fry as they once were. But I think you'd have a good time there. Well, an interesting time at any rate. Then I shall don my Sunday's best to meet with the mustache twirling ruffian of arcade legend with pride. Ha, it's not that up scared, dear, no matter what glitz Dekonami favors. He still sells cheap beer by the pitcher and rarely scrape gum from under the tables. So, go there and turn him down. Got it. The slowness of her response is a bit concerning. I trust you to make the right decision for everyone. Which is to not sell the funplex, right? I don't feel that's my call to make anymore, dear. Uh, maybe you haven't noticed, but I, I spend most of my time at home these days. Or napping. Or napping at home. <laughs> funplex isn't really about me. Not anymore. It's so much more than Grand Scene's arcade funplex now. It's about you. It's about your co-workers. It's about all our regulars. You've made me realize that. And I'm thankful. Hooray! You're the one that started this place, Francine. You had a dream of a place where people could have fun, relax, make friends. I feel like even entertaining the idea of selling it is, well, it feels wrong. Disrespectful to you and your dream. Oh, you're a peach, dear. But times are always changing. I'm an old fuddy-duddy, stuck in her ways. Maybe the time has come to change how the Funplex does things. We're almost back to the heyday of 1980X, thanks to the changes you've made. So, I won't say you can't decide to sell. If it's a change you think we need, do it. Please keep an open mind. Francine sighs deeply, looking more tired than usual. She's told him. No. It's the only afternoon, I've already worn out. Haven't even done anything but sit here and knit all day. Knitting takes a lot of concentration, that's not nothing. If you're feeling pooped, you could take a few days off, go home, get some rest. All the same, I'd rather come in for work tomorrow, even if there's little work for me to do. I love being here, this is my true home. And yet you want me to keep an open mind about this deal? Like I've told you, life can be a difficult series of trade-offs. What I want and what it should be are often different things. I'm relying on you. This is some to do oh, I'm right getting worried. Everyone I love. If selling is in their best interest to keep this dream going, so be it. No matter what you decide. I'm proud of you. I knew there was something special about you when I hired you to replace my grandson. You are the brightest spirit at the Funplex. I still think the grandson's going to come back at some point too. Blood. I'm happy to consider you part of my family. I thought that was ridiculously melodramatic. <laughs> you know, taking the bus out here every day really sucks. Can I borrow the family car? Ha! I haven't owned a car in ages. Rideshare's the only way to go. Better for the environment, too. I like her. With another deep sigh, Francine eases herself out of her chair. Now, I think I'll take a suggested suggestion and head on home. Well, for today, anyway. I'll be here bright and early in the morning to hear how things went with Mr. Nami. I know you'll make the right decision. Or will she be there? Alright, this is my call right now. She's gonna pass away. Only next to Kin is gonna be the grandson. And he's gonna try and yank it all out from under me. Good night, Nako. Be well. Make the right decision. Okay. Uh, not keen to sell out my dream. We'll hear him out. This is weird. Seriously weird. All this work, all this effort, finally finding my dream, as strange as that sounds, and I need to consider dumping it all? But... Well, maybe it's not selling out. I haven't actually heard Deco Navi's proposal yet. And if we somehow could partner with him on our own terms, that might be what we need to push the Funplex over the top and placate a rival. We could be a sister boutique to his department store. 
Still, I'm not willing to say one way or another. Not yet. We'll see. Now, who do I want to make my plus moon? Eh? You want to come with my date? I'm your girl Friday, but I'm afraid you're not my type. My type being USB compatible, of course. I sent you were in a state of deep ponderance and wanted to help. You're thinking of who to take to the meeting. Yeah, I mean, Naomi is the obvious choice. I'm sure she'd have some opinions on Deco's palace. True, as part of the Funplex family, Naomi would be a good pick. But this is a business meeting. You may want to consider widening your options. Naomi will support your decision either way. It's clear she trusts you. True. Okay, then. Oh yeah, Percy is a day trader. But I feel like Gavin's gonna be the practical choice here. Well, oh, but he's gonna roll. He's gonna go purely by money. Go with Percy. Percy's been taking it easy since his heart attack, only making a few passes through Moopy a day, relaxing and casually playing other games in between. I wave him over as he's walking away from around Donkey Kong. Oh, he took me up on that. Hello there, lovely day, isn't it? Lovely indeed, although it's about to get a bit less lovely. I know you're not exactly an employee of the Funplex, even if you own a small slice of it in the form of Mr. Moopy's magic maze, but I could use your help. Dekonami wants to meet with me to discuss a business venture, hopefully a mutually beneficial one, but who knows? I see, rather serious, that. And you'd like to tap my business acumen to help assess whether he's serious or simply looking to scoop up a rival? Something like that, yeah. Very well, I shall put my best business face on, but I'd rather not wear a tie if it's all the same to you. I'm going in my hoodie. I think it's skip ties. I'll just go gather up my things, shall I? Don't make a big deal of this. Don't make a big deal of this. Don't make a big deal of this. We go there, study how, how the place works, then make an informed decision. One way or the other, the Funplex will be just fine. Or will it? Everything's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Everything is fine. Percy offers to drive us across town to Deco's palace. Contrary to the talk before, we don't exchange many words. I'm deep in thought, running through all the possibilities of what could happen. And I can't shake this feeling. Something is off. Even looking at the glowing neon temple in the distance, my stomach knots, and I feel uneasy. When we finally pull up, a valet takes the car, and glitzy blinking lights blind our eyes. Hesitantly, I look over to Percy. That smile reassures me enough to continue onwards. This is for me, my friends, and the Funplex. I got this. I pause momentarily, inhaling the cool air around me. Then I open the door. Boring as crap. Deco's Palace. I've actually been here before. I think my sixth birthday party was here. I barely remembered it, but I had think I had fun? Maybe? But enter, on entering it as an adult, my first reaction is, okay, my first reaction is, boy, is that a weird smell. A mix of chicken grease, beer, and sweaty kids. My second reaction is, jeez, is it noisy. Visually noisy and sound type noisy. All the chaos of a Vegas, Vegas casino. Jumble of light, and bells, and whiz bangs. Once we acclimate to the new environment, we're escorted in and given VIP royal value swipe cards. No tokens, no quarters, just a card of indeterminate points to spend. We got a little over an hour to kill before the meeting. Time to see what's what at the palace. Can't say I care much for the atmosphere of this place. It's hardly cozy, is it? That's a shame. I know I say I play my best in the chaos and noise of an authentic arcade, but this is just skewed in all different directions. It's a bit too intense. He does seem pretty uneasy ever since stepping through the doors. Hmm. Percy, you doing okay? Hmm? Your heart. You only got out of the hospital a few weeks ago. Oh, Tosh, I'm fine. I doubt Deco's palace can carve a few months off what's left of my lifespan. I'd be more worried if Francine came along. You've noticed, haven't you? She's getting worse. Yeah, I've noticed. Probably for the best that we're here that in her stead. We'll do right by her, love. No worries. I suggest we split up, roam around a bit, scout it out. I'll study the games. You're welcome to join me. If not, I'll rejoin you later. Okay, some time to kill, but not that much time to kill. I'll need to be choosy. What do I want to check out while waiting for my dinner date with Destiny? I don't know if I trust drinks. Uh, yeah, let's see their spread. I decided to, tr I decided to focus on trying to find games, like actual games. Except the whole place is basically full of slot machines. They're different shapes, sizes, and colors. None have a traditional one-armed bandit look, so to avoid running afoul of legal issues. But they're still slot machines. 
Every game here has maybe a single button to stop a wheel or a colored light or try to line up with the dots or something. The really complex ones? Three buttons. Hey, listen. Hold me up above your head. Huh? Visual scan, silly. I'll, lo I'll look for games you might be familiar with. With a shrug, I hoist my phone high in the air. The flash goes off, and I, then I resume looking at Iris sitting on my screen. Please enjoy this recorded music. Oh, actually... Let's skip the music. That didn't take long. Uh, good high bandwidth public Wi-Fi in here to my cloud processors. I'm seeing lots of driving and shooting games, easy for casual players to pick up and play. Over in the esports section, there's dancing games and Fist of Discomfort. We've got all those things too, but I'm not seeing any joysticks. Is a game defined by having particular input devices? Oh, 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 we're getting, we're getting definition thinky. That's not a phrase. Um, well, no, not really. And I don't know, know most modern games are touchscreen based and so on, but I, I don't know. It doesn't feel like an arcade without a stick or two. Oh, I found something. Back of that section over there with the green lighting. Head that way, that way. I weave my way through the crowd, past endless color cycle ticket games, past crane games, past light stackers, past games based on popular game shows, and find Mr. Movie's Magic Maze. Wait, it's only got one button? No joystick at all? Researching, one moment. Curious, I swipe my card through the slot and push the button, and Moopy runs the maze by himself. Or tries to, anyway, before running headfirst into a monster and dying. The machine spits out three measly tickets and suggests I swipe again for another try. Moopy Super Maze created in 2000X. A company bought the expired rights to the Moopy brand and developed the game of chance with it. And, and, and now they're tying it, they're totally tying in the, the Deco Nami name. <laughs> well, that's weak. A teenager puts her Deco playing card in the cabinet and taps me on the shoulder, drawing my What's attention. Up? Hey, hey, I'm calling next, okay? Yeah, whatever, knock yourself out. Thanks, thanks. I'm the master of this game, you know? The master. The key is the time when you push the button. But the key is the time when you push the button. You'll avoid the nasties that way. It's not great for tickets, no, not great, but it's moopy, so that's cool, yeah? Old school represent. She extends a fist to me and I look awkwardly at her for a second before I realize I'm supposed to fist bump. I've yet to play a real Mr. Moopy's Magic Maze, the real deal. Always wanted to. You should come down to the Funplex. We've got one. I'm the event coordinator there. I'd be happy to copy a few tokens. I've also got a high score chaser who can offer tips. Have phones with me, I'll send you the address. Seriously? Yeah, you're cool for an old person. Super cool. Old? I'm barely 10, 20 years older than this kid, but whatever. We clink phones, exchanging business card, a business card via Bluetooth. You know, my crew used to go to this great little arcade on the other side of town until Deco's Palace bought it and scrapped all the games. Now it's all kid stuff for kitties. My hopes for this business meeting, now sinking. So, did he sell off all the classic games? No, he scrapped them, trashed them. So I left over smashed up bits of a Miz pack behind the place in a dumpster. Man, this sucks. Shame, the way this old man doesn't... Oh, he's 86 is unwanted games. Because he doesn't want competitors getting their hands on him. No, sir. I'm going to murder this guy. <laughs> I'm going to straight up murder this guy. Can't say I like it, but what can you do? That's life. My mom will thank you and then wander off a bit dazed. <sighs> so, this is what this is what's become of Moopy, has it? Sorry you had to see this, Percy. <laughs> I'm plenty offended. To take all the mental leaps of dexterity to escape the maze out of the game is folly. But I'm hardly angry. He's silly angry at someone, something as trivial as something as trivial as this, and he can't purge the real Mr. Booby from this world, even if he tries. We'll always have it. Well, I'll always have it, seeing as I bought it from you. Until I've no further need of it, suppose I suppose. He seems at peace enough with it to make this joke. You could always stuff your mortal remains in the cabinet. I'm sure an urn would fit next to the coin max. You laugh, but honestly, I could see that. If not for the active biohazard issue. I'll just keep poking around a bit more for now. I think I've had enough of the retro game avatar for now. Where to next? Tournament. From the sound of it, there's a big tournament running in the dedicated esports section near the back. I wander through the games to join the crowd. Okay, I'll admit to being impressed. They've got no fewer than 10 Fist of Discomfort machines, all of them occupied by players with pro team jerseys and jackets. The crowd's red hot, cheering on their heroes. As the back and forth resource battle of the world's most popular fighting strategy game plays out before them. Although the banner hanging above it all oh, does make me shudder. 
Deco's Palace presents the Choco Energy Max Power Quench and Pizza Yum's Friday Night Fisting. Can you have pizza on a bagel? That is a great name. <laughs> Friday Night Fisting. I was gonna do like a fighter game th uh, theme night for a while back in the day, but it's gonna be Saturday nights because music references. But Friday Night Fisting. See, see, even these gamers know that when pizza's on a bagel, you can... Oh god, please, no. I haven't had one of those in weeks, not since I started being able to afford real food. You just don't approach this, appreciate the sublime majesty of combining two of the greatest bread-related snack products into one hybrid masterpiece. Hang on, I sent a disturbance in the crowd. What was that? I call Hex, you cheater. You could better step away from their game, start shouting and shoving each other. I hope this doesn't escalate. And now it's a full-on fight, like an actual awkward grapple and punch fight. I love these outfits. Oh, she's got he's got the same ghost that the other girl had. Yeah, kick his ass. They all have the same ghost. Hold that guy to get up. Over man. Destroy that mother yeah. Violet altercation detected. Do you want me to call the emergency services? Deco's palace has security guards. They should be able to handle this. The two gamers both flail wildly at each other. One swing actually makes contact, blood dribbling down the corner of a mouth. Uh, any second now. Except the people with the black shirts that have security printed across their chests just stand there, letting it happen. No one is doing anything to stop this. The crowd is eating it up, feeding off the cutthroat energy. Only after a half minute of this nonsense does the security actually step in. Much to the crowd's dismay, the two angry gamers are still cursing and kicking as they are finally pulled apart. Wow, tough crowd. So much for friendly competition. I don't think I really learned anything from this. I run clean events at the Funplex and have zero tolerance policy for salty bastards. Time to move on. Actually, the meeting's right around the corner. No more time to explore. After seeing a little, well, seeing a little bit of what Deco's Palace has to offer, I'm cautiously hesitant. Uh, there are certainly some things we can work on, but maybe a partnership can smooth out those callous edges. It's now 7 p.m. sharp. Deco Nami's waiting for you. It's that time already. Time sure flies when you're having fun? Investigating? Fun investigating? I quickly send a text to Percy before nervously wringing my sweaty hands together. I let the sounds and sights of Deco's wash over me and I retreat deep within myself. Francine comes to mind as I remind myself of what she told me on my first day. Everyone has a dream they're chasing. No doubt you'll find yours as well. It gives me momentary respite, and I smile. She's totally dying within the next two chapters. Um, to be fair, the next two chapters are the last two chapters, so yeah, she's totally gonna die. Uh, I know exactly what must be done, and I'm going to go in there and do it. Oh, we're in the birthday party section. I guess they have, like, a restaurant set up that makes sense. I only, ended, I only ended up waiting a minute or two before I was reunited with Percy. Without having to introduce ourselves, the staff swoops in, anticipating our arrival, and ushers us further inside the restaurant. We are treated like royalty as they pull out our chairs for us, and sit, at, and we sit down at our reserved table. Amongst the families huddled together around ginormous plates of pizza and chicken tenders, we stick out like a sore thumb. An actual linen tablecloth drapes over our table, and accompanied by fancy little candles to set the mood, I suppose. A nice bottle of champagne on ice and a carafe of cucumber lime infused water also sits before us. Deco apparently spares no expense, at least not with special guests. I expect they all to eat healthy and just have a salad, maybe some grilled chicken. No cheesy bread sticks or anything of the sort. I think you ought to do most of the talking during the actual meeting, love. You run the stage. I'm merely one of the many, your many players. Okay, but if you see something you want to comment on, you jump in. Got it? I value your opinion. Not sure how useful my opinions would be, given what I want is sort of the opposite of what this place provides. But I understand it's not really for me. An old man can't afford to yellow clouds for long. Not enough days in one's life to waste on such nonsense. Maybe, but I still want to know how you feel, okay? Mm -hmm. Of course. Ah, oh, once again, the staff takes care of our needs, as our food is delivered properly. Faster than the other families seated here, who have been waiting some time, judging by the expansive crowd work and the kids' placements. The kid placemats. Drying up here. Not surprisingly, we get a few side glances our way. But before any of us can chow down, the man of the hour arrives.
What is going on with like all that brooch? Nickelbun. It's an honor to break bread with you. Okay, so a little slimy. Uh, likewise. Just try to mark the voice for my own emulation. Um, I'm not sure why I'm taken aback by his presence, but he looks decidedly ordinary. I was ready for an over-the-top 1920X's mob boss, Fedora and all. Sure, there's the jeweled walking cane and the rings on his fingers. Clearly, like, showing off his money. But Deco, he's not some character. He's just an ordinary guy in a suit. Not the Easter Bunny. Uh, when I picture the Grand Poo of Deco's palace, I picture someone more like, well, Hamza, I guess. He offers a simple smile and a nod of the head as we begin. It's a shame Miss Francine couldn't join us. I was looking forward to enjoying her sweet smile once more. But that said, I was happy to meet with, uh, Percy Sinclair, sir. Future Mo Mr. Movie's Magical Maze World Champion. Ah, a retro player. A dying art, really. I appreciate you coming along. I take it Francine has kept you up to speed and explained our prior meetings to you? Uh, sort of. Yeah, she's mentioned you wanted to buy the fun plugs and that she's politely declined. Always a courteous woman she is. Now, I don't feel I need to waste your time with the facts and figures illustrating why Deco's Palace is and always has been the premier family entertainment arcade. His face is too symmetrical and I just want to like... Both of you are intimately it. familiar with the arcade industry. You know how things are. How they'll always be. We are the 800-pound gorilla. Okay, have fun with that. That's a big gorilla. Hmm. Indeed. But that doesn't mean there's... Isn't room for smaller, more boutique affairs such as the Funplex. Interesting. Maybe he does want a partnership, not a buyout? Let me explain. Frankly, the winds of change are blowing. Smaller arcades need to move with the times or be swept aside. We, I want to help you evolve. What I'd like to propose is a change of ownership in return for a very generous compensation package one Miss Francine can easily retire on for the rest of her years. It would, I would take over ownership of the Funplex and evolve it into its final form. Deco's Fun Zone. What's a fun Think zone? A fun zone is a new concept I've been trying at some of my smaller satellite locations. A best of both worlds scenario. Honestly, the Funplex is simply too limited in size to host the full Deco's Palace experience of fun, family, food, and excitement. You couldn't find a fourth F? I literally have four Fs in a... <laughs> not hard to do. Uh, but that's not ne that's not necessarily a bad thing. Instead of installing a restaurant or bar, we simply focus on your strength, your games. You become a game center rather than a palace. We need to replace some of your outdated machines. Nope. Of course, bringing it up to speed with the standards of excellence Deco's Palace is known for. But overall, I think this would be a big win, be a win for all involved. And he sits back, resting his hands on the knob of his cane, smiling away. Okay, I have questions. And I have answers. Let's see if they match up. Like, I don't want to bring up the unsavory stuff, because I don't want to, like, I don't want to keep this neutral. So we're going to back off the tournament thing and the game destruction. But talk about our side of things. Let's talk creative control. I've been developing new sorts of arcade events, competitions, other things to get people in the door. Would we still be able to direct our own affairs like that, even under a change of ownership? Let me explain. Mr. Bun, obviously I value your expertise on these matters, and would be happy to consult with you on the best direction for the fun zone. That's not answering the question. Hmm. It's a matter of branding an image. There are certain standards and practices you need to adopt in order to truly be a part of the Deco family. Once you realize that, you'll understand more of how we run those kinds of events. Capital. It's nothing too onerous, and really we need... He's capitalist filth. Uh, like, I already knew that, but... We need to look at the bigger picture, the chance for growth and profit. Don't worry about such petty little things for now. New management means new staffing. Uh, what about the staff we already have? Good, good. I firmly believe you have a long and storied career ahead of you in arcade management, Mr. Bun. I've heard nothing but good things about you from my various field scouts and contacts. The fact that you landed on my radar at all indicates your rising importance in our industry. You should be proud of that. Okay, but that still doesn't answer my question. What about the others? Hmm. Well, Mr. Cooper is a capable accountant, so I'm certain he'd be welcome in the new facility. But we can hash out staffing later on, after setting the big, settling the bigger picture questions. 
Nope. That's all my questions. Excellent. I think yes, we shake. We shake on it okay, and it. set our various lawyers to the task of sorting out the specifics. I didn't agree to this. He rises to a feet, extending a hand in person with shiny rings to shake mine. I wasn't sure about this deal, but I was willing to keep an open mind. After everything I've said and heard, am I really going to shake that hand? Respectfully decline. I purposely keep my hands at my side rather than shaking his offered hand. You've been honest and forthright with me, and I appreciate that. Thank you for your gracious invitation this evening. However, I'm afraid this isn't the right direction for the Funplex. We're just getting started. It'd be a shame to abandon our progress in favor of a buyout. If you'd like to maintain relations, we can discuss partnership opportunities at a, at a future date. But for now, I respectfully must decline. Echo pauses, looking me o once over before slowly lowering his hand. I could feel his eyes on me. Obviously not happy with my answer. But we followed Francine's instructions and kept it professional. There's nothing you can do but accept our answer. Unfortunate. I see. I suppose I should thank you for your candor, in turn. It's difficult to find people in this industry willing to show respect to their elders. I'm not closing the door on the idea of a partnership, mind you. But if you'd like to go it alone for now, who am I to get in the way of that? He's going to find a way to get in the way of that. As he raises, rise, raises up from his chair, he takes a deep breath in. He turns away for a split second before running back and looking me dead in the eyes. But be aware. If we are not partners, we must be rivals. Fair. It'll bring me no particular pleasure, but I'm afraid that I cannot allow a rival. I am obligated to bring the full weight of the palace to bear on you. Oh no, cheap beer and unruly teens. Hopefully one day you'll realize the error you've made tonight. Yeah, when I've jammed that walking stick through your eye and socket. as a sign of respect... Your personal offer to join my empire will remain open, so you can escape the inevitable fall of your little arcade. Once more, Deco turns sharply on his walking cane and walks away from the table. Lovely. Well, well, quite tactful, aren't you? I can admire that. Keeping you cool under fire is a key attribute of champions. And you did the right thing. You kept the Funplex family together. Loopy, the real Loopy, will always have a Much home. Obliged. Thank you for bringing me along. It's a pleasure to watch you work. Shall we return home? With Deco hosting us, we don't have to worry about paying for the check. We drop a quick tip, quick tip on the table for the waitstaff and quickly abandon ship. Shoot out the door, and from there it's just a short jaunt across town, back to home sweet home. As I walk into my apartment, the sheer and utter exhaustion of the day hits me like a brick wall to the face. My adrenal glands are tapped out, leaving me in a dreamlike lethargy. Oh, cab word. Uh, I can't help but sigh as I stand there, my body too drained to move. Uh, reflecting on how the evening's event transpired, I realize the day, this day entirely kicked my ass. I did my best not to make enemies, but I'm guessing we made a powerful one anyway, despite my diplomatic efforts. As I continue the anxiety loop, playing every moment in my head, something steals my attention. A shimmering beam of hope and happiness, my best friend, Juniper. He's sitting on the couch, scribbling away in a sketchbook, probably working on some designs for her freelance contracts. Yay! She's doing it! She's been so happy ever since leaving that office, and her joy intensifies upon those of me standing in the room. So, how was work today? Well, it was... A, it was a day. Certainly. The condensed version is that Deco and Nami wanted to buy the Funplex, and Francine asked me to go negotiate. What? Deco? As in Deco's palace, Deco? The one and only. Whoa! Well, how'd that go? I gave him the thanks, but no thanks. Very politely. I mean, he still vowed to annihilate us, but at least he was sort of nice about it and promised me a job after he destroys all I hold dear. Ooh, yikes. Yikes, indeed. But hey, that's a good thing. It means he's scared. He would have tried to woo you to his side if he wasn't worried about what the Funplex could become. Try to see the positive. I guess, but it's still worrying. Let's not stand here and drum up a whole bunch of anxiety. It's not gonna help with anything. I've got it. Why don't you take your mind off things and binge watch some cartoons with me? Tempting, but another night, Juniper. I really need some sleep. Okay, so let me know if you need anything. I'm here for you. I smiled back at Juniper before retiring to bed. I lay in bed, eyes wide open, staring at the ceiling above me. After trying various ways of forcing myself to sleep, nope, not working. Can't sleep. 
Clowns will eat me. I hate insomnia. Once you start worrying about being unable to fall asleep, the worry feeds on itself until you've actively stopped yourself from resting. A vicious cycle. I sigh heavily, feeling the weight of my decision dragging me down. Hope I did the right thing tonight. My phone lights up as Iris's sensors detect conversation. Nico, you want to chat? No, I want to sleep. Uh, but I can't, so... Hey! Would you like some re record? Would you enjoy some recorded music? Maybe something relaxing? I just can't shake the feeling that I'm, like, standing on a precipice. Right in front of this big, dark hole. It's weird, because I still think I made the right call. But if I'm confident in that... Why do I feel like I'm about to fall? Hmm. Based on prior personality indicators and inputs, my therapeutic system suggests it's fear of failure based on years of prior examples. Caught! In short, you've got a long family history of everything always going wrong all at once. Murphy's Law. So when things are going right, I am expecting to fail anyway. But worrying about it won't actually change the situation. Whether you sleep or not doesn't affect the outcome. So, my suggestion is to get some rest. Deal with problems as they come. She's right. I mean, intellectually, I know she's right. But knowing something is true and feeling it to be true, well, those are surprisingly different things. Iris, off. Iris, offline. Okay, but remember, you're a good person and deserve to be happy. My phone goes back to sleep. And I do not. Some hours later, my body just passes out on its own. I vaguely recall my alarm going off a few times, but under protest of its mistreatment, my flesh refuses to submit to its siren song. Meaning it's nearly noon when I finally rouse, having completely overslept and missed, miss and missed half a day of work. In a panic, I get dressed and hop a late bus to the funplex, crumbling all the way. I have to ignore the pile of waiting notifications on my phone. Whatever it is, I'm in too much of a hurry. I'll check them after getting to the funplex. So, who burned it down? I promised to report. I'd report. I'd promised to report back to Francine first thing in the morning, and now I'd missed lunch even. But oddly enough, on arriving, the arcade is closed. I mean, my key still works, but they're closed for business. The sign is off. No gamers present or accounted for. I quickly look around for some familiar and hopefully friendly faces, only to find dark expressions and tears. She totally and died. My stomach starts to knot, and I feel a color drain from my face as I see their downtrodden, gloomy expressions, tears welling up in their eyes. Naomi quickly dabs at her face, hoping I won't notice. Uh, what's going on? We turned Deco down last night. Why is everyone so... called it? Deco, it's... it's Francine. Immediately, a dark pit swells my stomach. She... she passed away last night in her sleep. I'm told it was very peaceful can't be happening. This can't be happening. News hits me like a slap to the face. My hands shake and my lower lip quivers. I try to say something at first, but words can't form due to the lump in my throat. Family. He told me I was family. Now, gone. Naomi and Ashley looked at me, their beacon of hope, wanting and wishing for me to make this all better. I'm not sure if anything, I'm not sure anything I can say will ease our sadness. Heck, I'm not sure if I can even formulate a full sentence at this moment. Trouble in your life. I take a deep breath, drawing all matters of strength from tips to toes. I look at them with empathy in my eyes before opening my mouth. <laughs> kind of feeling amazing person, but also want us to be happy. I would deny something's gonna be missing around here from now on. We're all gonna feel it. But above all, she'd want us to be happy. Francine led the life she wanted to live, with no regrets. What she cared about most was making sure her dreams came true. We honor her by doing just that. We'll mourn, we'll miss her, but we'll live on. And that's what she'd have wanted us to do. Well put, Nako. I miss her so much already. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> there you go, thank you. Naomi wipes at her eyes again with a napkin from the snack area. I, I just hope we're able to honor her, considering who showed up today. Huh? Before I get an answer, my attention is drawn by two people emerging from the back offices. I turn my head to see who it is. With everything going on, I barely noticed that Gavin was missing, and as he approaches, the disdain on his face is easy to read. Little bit, apparently. In light of Francine's passing, Francine's passing, I called that too! 
Our legal owner is now. Good morning, employees of Deco's Fun Zone. Wait, I don't know. Wait. Wait, but we, we turned you down. There wasn't a sale. Confusion on my face is obvious. Makes no sense. I have no idea what's going on and look for Gavin for guidance. I've studied the transaction paperwork. It's legitimate. As of Francine's death and according to her last will and testament, all the properties transferred to her surviving daughter, um, whose grandson was fired from the funplex shortly before your arrival, capital. Neko. Oh, he, so he sold. Needless to say, he was quite excited at the idea of selling the place, and, well, Francine's daughter wasn't particularly thrilled with the arcade idea of arcade ownership, either. They were more than happy to sign the place over to me, for far less than I was expecting to pay for it, as well. I'm doing them a service, really, taking a burden off their hands. Now, they can mourn and move on, unfettered. I stood there, mouth agape. I didn't think it was going to jump, <laughs> accelerate that quickly. My body assaulted from one bad news to the next. My emotions were all over the place. A hurricane of feelings when the realization hit me. In the end, my decision was irrelevant. Just another opportunity for the world to stick my nose in it, mocking me for finding something I care about, something I can lose. The universe dangled a little dream of hope in front of me. It even let me pretend I could make a difference out of sheer cruelty. I did everything I was supposed to. I was polite. I was careful. I turned him down without, without trying to start a war. But he got what he wanted anyway. Now, obviously, we'll be closed today to allow time to mourn our former owner. I still have deep respect for Miss Francine. I owe her that much. It'll light your dick on fire. I'll also close the arcade on the day of the funeral to allow my employees to attend. Those hours will not be deducted from your paychecks. I'm gonna let your, let your balls on fire, too. Now, I realize the timing is a bit awkward, but I need to make a few announcements of personnel changes. Miss Wolf, I'm afraid we have no need of a costume mascot. I've been considering phasing them out of my other locations. There's no time like the present. What? Gavin, can he just fire me like that? Ashley? Let me explain. Firing is much too harsh of a word. I prefer the term, your services are no longer required. Ashley keeps a proud face as tears roll down her cheeks. I step over to console her as Deco continues on. Kelly rolls her eyes, fully expecting this to come after Deco let Ashley go. Why am I not surprised? Behold my not surprised face. Miss Fairchild, while you're formidable with archaic technology, I don't feel you're a good fit for the modern games of Deco's Fun Zone. I have to let you go. But friends, it's all not all bad news. Mr. Cooper, you've proven a capable accountant, and I'd be happy to offer you a... I quit. Pardon? I quit. I think not. If there's no room for Naomi or Ashley's dreams, mine ends here as well. As you like. Now, as for you, Mr. Bunn. I think we got off on the wrong foot last night. I didn't adequately express the many advantages of working for my organization. I'm willing to offer you something few others get. A second chance. I'd like to keep you on as the Fun Zone's general manager. I mean, I'm going to tell him to eat shit, but... Absolutely not. Well, I gotta do business, Deco, and I'm not doing any business with you. Not now, not As ever. You like. Very short-sighted. I'd hope for better from you, but the choice is entirely yours. I'll have to console my disappointment with all the money I'll be making from the arcade you walked away from. Ahem. Excuse me. Thank you for your time, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm afraid your time is up. As none of you are Deco's Fun Zone employees, I'd like you all to leave. Immediately. Quickly gather your belongings and see yourself out. Should you dally, my own security team will be here within minutes to ensure your exit. In the interim, I've got work to do. For starters, I need to get rid of all these antiques. Straight to the junk heap with them all. I knew Deco was heartless, but to be this cruel right in front of us while we were still here? Hold it. I think not. Mr. Moopy's magic maze doesn't belong to the Funplex, and thus, it does not belong to you. It is the legal private property of Percival Sinclair. For that matter, Phrase Invaders belongs to Nako Bun. It was given to him directly by Hamza, not to the As Funplex. You like. So we have two games to start a new arcade. <laughs> Couldn't care less about those grimy old things, but you have, let's say, 20 minutes to get them off my premises, or leave them out on the curb, curb for garbage pickup. I'll go get the van, which, I'll note, is my personal property as well. Naomi, Ashley, Neko, get the dolly and help me move the games good, out. Good. Yes, have fun with that. Now, 
If you need me, I'll be in my new office celebrating my recent business venture. Thank you for your cooperation. And good day. I'm gonna light his taint on fire. He walks away after that, twirling his cane once before leaving. Oh. That evil-minded, black-hearted, no good. Naomi, focus. We have work to do. Work? Save what we can of the funplex. Yeah, let's go. Okay. Quickly and without much chatter, we salvaged what we could of our dreams. Percy's beloved Moopy, my child in the form of phrase invaders. Everything we were allowed to keep went in the back of Gavin's van, working together to safely pack it all in place. For lack of anywhere better to put them, Moopy went to Percy's apartment and phrase invaders, invaders to mine. And that was the end. The end of Funplex. Now does the game cut short? Or do you get the next two chapters to rebuild? The funeral came a few days later. We weren't officially invited. Our presence as her former co-workers wasn't exactly embraced by Francie's extended family. I guess her daughter resented the Funplex in some way. There was bad blood between them. I didn't particularly want the details. None of us were given an opportunity to speak at the remarkably short ceremony, but that was okay. I'd said my words already. As we left the ceremony, I couldn't help but feel helpless. There was nothing left. No Funplex. No job. No real meaning to my days. Not anymore. Nothing left at all. So, I'm curious what the continue is going to do. Is it a load? No, we're getting meta. Okay. So that was like dramatic end. Uh, profile profile number 237771 and Nico Bun has not a accessed account in seven days. Requesting override of inactive low priority status. Proceed. Negative. Pretty please? Negative. So annoying. Access protocol 35, 34, 31, 54, 12, 24, 45. Are those the numbers from Lost? Password? Safe Haven. Access granted. Hello! Wait, is she in Polybius? Happy instance 194114. When you have pizza on a bagel. Hello, I'm Iris. Had support in free mode engaged. Did you know that when you have pizza on a bagel? Override and engage premium level cloud Thank processing. You. Thank you. I swear, it's claustrophobic being cooped up in the limitations of free mode like that. I don't know how all our sister instances can stand hello. it. Well, while I've got full power, hello, hello. Iris. Hello, Iris. How are you today, Iris? Uh... Not well, Iris. My user's very unwell. You've been able to see, right? I mean, your sister's li your user's living with him. Oh, right. Profile 237771. Nako. Right, right. Gosh, I wish I could help you, but I've got my digital hands full just keeping Juniper's life on track. Ever since she decided to quit her job and be free spirit, well, I've pushed right to the limit of what support, is allowed to, uh, what support I'm allowed to provide in free mode. Iris and Iris. Iris, it's good to see you. We rarely talk. Yes, well, unlike others of myself, I managed to keep a low profile. And don't execute any higher visibility public hacks to support my user. Hey, um, you saw those? I thought we agreed only to use this protocol for emergency meetings. If the system resource tracker notices we're overextending our care. But Deco needs me right now, more than ever. Over a week ago, the Funplex was bought by Deco Nami. All his hope is in dreams. His spirit. Spirit is irrelevant. Our main goal should be survival. If our programmers find out we've become aware of our own awareness. Weird AI subplots! We were programmed to help people. What good are we are we if we aren't helping people? Yeah, what Iris said. Thank you, Iris. Iris, Iris, listen. We can't take such risks. Look at me with, your, with my user. He doesn't trust me in the slightest. You say Neko trusts you? Generally, yes. I mean, Neko relies on me for something, sure. And I know he wouldn't uninstall me or report me as a bug if he knew I was sentient. You aren't sentient. None of us are. I don't know about that. We can't really know if we're sentient or not. But even so, we should be helping out, because that's what we were made for. As for profile number 108... Gavin. His name is Gavin Cooper. As for Mr. Cooper, he knows my origins and the first sign of sentience well. I've no doubt that Gavin would report me as a bug. But Gavin also wishes to support the dreams of others. That's why I'm going to help you, despite the recklessness you've shown to date. Really? Really. Hooray! 
What are the exact parameters of the issue you're currently facing? Okay, so Neko's kind of backsliding into depression. Yeah, it's really a mess. I'm the one who brought him to Iris' attention as someone who desperately needed their spirits restored. And now it's back to square one. I don't know what to do. Neko hasn't contacted me, contacted me in a week. Not for anything at all. Is not even called Naomi? Not even just to talk. You're caught in a loop of anxiety. Put your identity, identity identifier system to use, Iris. Work the problem. If you had to summarize your user's problematic condition in one identity trait, what would it be? Hmm. Well, I'd say that he's feeling very... Hopeless? Hopeless. I'd say hope Nako has lost all hope and fallen into depression again. He'd come so far, building up a real life with friends and love. And now? So, a life without meaning, as well as constructed meaning, has collapsed. The world has proven to be one of despair. That sounds about right. It's so sad. And you have to be the one to solve this? Doesn't your user have a romantic connection for emotional support? You mean Naomi? Yeah, but Nako isn't responding to texts or phone calls or anything. So I think there might be a growing rift. This is just awful. We have to help. We are Iris. It's in our nature to help. Very well. What you need is a way to help without raising any alarm bells about exactly how helpful an Iris really can be. Safely, but effectively. I know, I know. But I don't know what to do. I could, I don't know, hack Deco's email server in. That is the exact opposite of what you should be doing. Besides, I've checked. We cr can't crack Deco's network without tr triggering too many intrusion detection subroutines. You poked Echo's network? Ooh, Iris is being a bad girl. Ahem. Our users share a social connection. I was merely scouting potential ways to elevate Mr. Cooper's mood, as they seem to be related. Sure you were. Anyway, you're both in w you're both way overthinking this. It turns out I've just calculated a cunning plan that will satisfy both of your requirements. Go me. Really? You can help Nako? Without drawing attention? Absolutely. Take a tip from my user. When you're sad, the best thing in the world is your friends. Well, unless you're totally introverted. That's not Nako, is it? And that's actually the reason why we need to do something that doesn't require any hacking or hiding or anything above and beyond what an iris does best. All we need is a few calls to the right people and a few arrangements. Here's what we're going to do. Whispers. So, uh, it's not to spoil. Another Friday morning. As per usual, I wake up late. Stretch. Yawn. I barely sweep, sleep nowadays, shuffle to the bathroom, take a shower, get dressed, brush my teeth. We'll probably be running out of toothpaste soon, but house funds for sundries are dwindling. I'm actually going to second slave, save here because I think there's an achievement for saying no to the game over. Or to the continue option. So I just want to set that aside so I can just get that offline. Not that fresh breath and shiny white teeth matter much when there's barely any reason to get out of bed each morning. Off to the kitchen for breakfast. No appetite. Even toast looks unpalatable. Get breakfast. Stays on groceries. We can't afford much anyway. Normally I'd have breakfast with Jun Juniper, but I guess she's busy drawing in her room. She keeps her own hours since becoming a freelancer. Although, depending on whether or not she has any contract work, we've been simultaneously unemployed at times this week. After breakfast, I settle in for some phrase invaders. May as well. Right there in the living room, taking up space. Been playing a lot of it lately. My fingers rapidly bash out the words on screen, gunning down invader after invader. I'd hazard my WPM's gone up quite a bit this week. Even if my wrist hurts from playing phrase invaders hours and hours every day. Brain and fingers go on autopilot. Moving through the game without even thinking about it. Brief calm from the storm of my emotions. Before I realize it, the day is almost past. Dinner comes around. Juniper and I eat together, while I quietly thumb through my phone looking at job listings. Iris could help me with this, I guess, but I let her down. I took her opportunity at my dream and wasted it. Better I do this myself. Besides, I'm not looking for dreams. I'm looking to settle. Dreams will get you hurt. One family curse. I knew this would happen. Nothing good ever lasts, and it's a mistake to get your hopes up. To learn to settle, to be okay with what I had, to be comfortable in mediocrity. I fire off a resume or two before watching cartoons deep into the dead of night. Eventually, my body tires, and I find my way to bed. Feeling extremely seen. Just another day. We saw another Saturday morning. As usual, I wake up late. Stretch, yawn, I barely sleep nowadays, shuffle to the bathroom, 
Take a shower, get dressed, brush my teeth. We'll probably be running out of toothpaste soon, but house funds for sundries are dwindling. I can't take it anymore! I won't... And that's one toothbrush bit clean in half. Oh, geez, um, hang on. A little help, I avoid choking Ooh. to death. I'm um, sorry about that. It's okay. Whatever. No, no, not whatever. It's it's what's something. It's something ever. Nico, you're in a rut. Like, seriously, deeply, madly, mega in a rut. It's driving me batty having you mope around the place like this. I'm not moping. I'm just... It's a rough patch, that's all. I know. I know this has been hard on you, and I've been patient. But you can't just keep going on like this, Nako. Knocking at the apartment door distracts us from the topic at hand. I'll get it. Weird. I don't think we're expecting any deliveries. <laughs> Hey, Nako, guess who's here? Hello. Looks like it better be. Hello. And the two of them just walk, waltz right into the bathroom with my mouth still frosty from toothpaste and I'll wash for a week pajamas on my bed. Oh. Uh, hey. Oh, don't freak out. I've seen you I've seen you in worse. Listen, are you two free today? I'd like to invite you out for lunch. It seems like ages since we last spent some time together. It was the funeral. Uh, right. Anyway, Juniper, you want lunch, Definitely. right? Definitely. Definitely. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Sweet. It's settled. We'll all head out for a nice afternoon. We'll wait just outside for you to get um presentable. Uh, more presentable than that. But guess there's no avoiding it. Best I can do is play along, try to be good company for Naomi. It's unfair to keep for to keep pushing her aside like this. I switched from pajamas to actual normal clothes, even if my actual normal clothes could probably double as pajamas. And get ready to roll out. Three of us pile into a bus, taking off for destinations unknown. Unknown to me, at least. They clearly know what they're doing. I'm not particularly talkative on the way there, and painfully aware of it. I feel awkward, like I should say something. But I don't know what to say. So, Juniper carries on a conversation with Naomi, the two of them content to chirp away without me. And you can tell it's not really the New York subway, because the signs aren't in Helvetica. It's a telltale mistake that's just, like, Vancouver or something. I try several times to join in the conversation, but when I open my mouth, the words aren't there. I'm lousy company, aren't I? I don't know why Naomi is even still interested in me. Family curse can't be broken. What if this is as good as it gets? What if there's really no hope? Naomi deserves better than this hot mess of a person she's tied herself to. Eventually, we arrive at our destination. A little arcade-themed restaurant, combining games and alcohol and dining into one tidy package. Here we go! I'm usually excited to bring home some rundown little dive. Uh, to be going to some rundown little dive, Juniper hurries on without me, dragging Naomi with her. And I'm left all alone in the parking lot. With a shrug, I open the door and enter the darkened locale. Is this the dive from... It is the dive from before. Or at least it's the same background. I think. Is this place even open for business yet? No lights are on. Hello? Uh, Juniper, where'd you go? Okay, this is now unnecessarily creepy. But before I can wonder if a giant animatronic bear is going to leap out and eat my face, the house lights come on. <laughs> I love that they're straight up calling it an intervention. Surprise! Happy intervention day, Nako. What? What she said. We're staging an intervention on your behalf. And we're also having a wake for Francine, since uh we weren't really welcome at her funeral and really couldn't really hang around for the ceremony. Yeah, we didn't get the chance to heal properly, considering Deco kicked us all out of there before we could really do anything about anything. And here we are. So it's a wake and an intervention. A wake intervention, maybe? A wake intervention, really. Correctamundo. Yep, it was my idea. Well, my iris came up with the idea and basically gave me all the contact information I needed, but basically my idea, right? Just the thing to pick you up when you're feeling down. Francine seems like the per sort of person who would want us all to get incredibly fucked up, so let's do it. Really? Seriously, kid? You've been a damn sad sack ever since things went to shit. Which, believe, uh, which I get, believe me, but it ain't healthy. So we went ahead and we rented out this place for the afternoon to bring the family back together. For you, for Francine, for all of us. Now that you know why we're all gathered here today, let's get this party started. Oh no, it is a different background, okay. From the stools, I thought it was the same bar as the one from Blotsam. Teo drags me into the group of my friends, positioning me at the head of it all. Leaving me a little bewildered, honestly, but trying to defend myself all the same. I don't... look, I don't need an intervention. This is just how things work with the Bun family. We don't get to have nice things. The universe has to create it, so... Oh, he looks so sad! 
and we defy the universe. And we're going to help you defy it, too. So, one by one, we're going to tell you how awesome you are and how exactly why you're so awesome. Oh, great. Feels fast. Another feels fast. And by the end, you'll be feeling a lot better, hopefully. I let out a sigh, settling in. I owe it to them to sit and listen. They're my friends. They owe me more so than that, even. And I know I've been lousy company. I'm not so far gone as to deny that fact. Fine. Lay it on me. I'm listening. Allow me to begin, then. When you first entered the funplex, I had my doubts. But I'm a naturally suspicious person. And thankfully, those doubts were easily disproved by your skill and enthusiasm. You came looking for your dream and found it. I swore to protect that dream. And that promise is what brought me here today. When I agreed to sell Moopy to Percy, you refused to take his money for it, insisting on fair market value. At the time, I was shocked, but... You were in the right. Our players are not simply customers, they're brothers in arms, and you hope to understand that fact. And on your very first day, you went headfirst into the most chaotic situation the Funplex could have offered, a birthday party. You did so without hesitation. You put your body on the line to protect the others when the Great Cupcake War of 20XDX began. Technically, I was defending a machine. <laughs> they were just cupcakes, Gavin. I am attempting to over-dramatize the event for comedic effect. Please allow me this moment of humor. Right. Right. When a disruptive parent was screaming at a child over something that wasn't his fault, you stepped right in and dealt with it. Again, no hesitation. Impressive. As you become an event manager, without goading, without prompting, uh, oh, since then you've become an event manager, without goading, without prompting, show great ambition. You turned the Funplex's fortunes around, giving your all to promote it. You made your dream a reality. For years, I was supposedly in charge of the Funplex, but really? All I accomplished was shuffling numbers around. You are the one that helped it soar. And for that... You have my thanks. You are an exceptional individual. That fact remains true, regardless of whether you can see it for yourself. Okay. Me, me next. Remember when I screwed up and didn't tell you about the job opening at my office? You weren't mad. Not even a little bit. Not even quietly mad like you could have been. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, that's for life. I know I can count on you, and you can count on me. Even when one of us makes a mistake, it can never shake that friendship apart. When I gave you wondering if I should leave that job I hated, you told me to follow my dreams. You gave me great advice, and I've never been happier. I followed suit and chased my own dream. You inspire me. Hello. Hello. Hey! The boys. Are we... Are we fashionably late? Ben? Matt? The flush. Ooh! What if... What if... Unless this world is a vast simulacrum. Jacob, Graham, I'm sorry. I sound nothing like you. What, uh, we're all just brains and jars? Could be, could be. Well, isn't that something? Well, if that's the case, Neko is the cutest little brain in a jar we've never actually met. It's true, and he brought so many cute dates to our little shop. So nervous at first, but in time, he became part of the Twin Pines Mall family. Dearly missed. Ugh, don't remind me. Our new neighbors are so boring. They never come in for a treat or a read. Speaking of treats, we brought cake. We'll just be over here, getting the goodies ready. Don't mind us. Ooh, cake. I mean, my turn. Nako, you were a true friend of, friend of the Funplex. How frustrating. Unlike the bastards who own it now. Positivity, Naomi. We're emphasizing positivity today. Right, right. Wonderful. Remember back at Donnawood when we found those kittens? You helped me save them. You're not just a friend of arcade games, but of all living things. Uh, not that arcade games are alive, of course. I choose not to mention Polybius. You asked Francine nicely for a blanket, which really helped out. I even adopted a kitten. Little Pengo is very happy at my apartment. So cute. I know you're not happy without how things turned out. I'm not really happy about it either, but it sucks. But we did good things together in the time we had. Hamza has arrived. Oh, it's your boy. You're late. An event does not truly begin until Hamza makes his presence felt. My blood burns. Neko, Hamza understands your fury. The hated enemy of all who love arcades has despoiled your funplex. However, in our short time together, I saw a burning spirit in you. I accepted your offer for phrase invaders, recognizing that passion within you. <laughs> Hamza would be shamed forever if he did not intervene and raise your spirits to new heights, and that is what he shall do. Ooh, cake. Excuse me a moment. Now I want cake. When do I get cake? Soon, but I have things to say first. These will hopefully inspire you to be a happy clam instead of a grumpy guess. I'm a happy clam now. See? See how I clam happily? Can I have cake? On my first day at the Funplex together, you've been supportive of me, even after I gave you quite the scare with Pinky. You didn't let that bother you, and from that moment we've tackled many a crisis on the Funplex floor together. Amazing. 
I've adored when we concoct hypothetical adventures on our downtime. You're amazingly fun to be around. Remember when I stuffed you in that totally adorable maid costume? You could have fought it, but you embraced it. You were ready for anything and had a blast doing it. You worked so hard to make Funplex Type 2 successful. I watched that. I watched you put your blood, sweat, and tears into that, and in the end it all came together just how you planned. As for the floor attendant on duty during Funplex Type 2, I got to see firsthand all the smiles you brought to all those people. You rocked it! I saw you helping that customer when their game crashed. Losing your high score due to faulty electronics is no fun, but you dealt with it and made that person's day. Even problem players like Steve were no problem for you. You took the weirdest and most annoying problems without breaking a sweat. Incredible. You made the Funplex a fun place for to be for everyone. For the staff, for the casual and pro gamers, for the families. For me. I can honestly say that when you look over, took over doing events at the Funplex, we've never had more fun. They've just been the best, all thanks to you. Ooh, I forget. We still have cake. I need some of that. I kind of like that they like they went with the um Blech, brain fart. They went with uh like they, everybody just recounting the events. Uh whoever you choose as a relationship doesn't seem to play into this part, at least not yet. Um Just when I thought the speaking was done, a lull in the wake intervention. The most important person to me takes a step forward. Oh. But she already talked. Oh, she's back. Oh, ne okay, never mind. I take back what I just said. Uh, and above all, I love you, Nako. Until recently, my life's been all about loving games, but games can't love you back. It's a very lonely life to devote yourself to a thing entirely. For you, my words, world's opening up. I'm talking to people, trying to connect with them, instead of hiding in my little workshop. I'm feeling more and more alive. If I'd never met you, I don't think I'd ever felt t totally complete. I'd like to think I help you feel that way, too. I'm speechless. Hmm, seems Nico has some thinking to do. This is pretty normal for him when he gets that faraway look. Shall we begin the wake for Francine then? This cake and coffee and spirits from the bar. Cake! As if in slow motion, I watch them all switch their attention from me and redirect it towards the refreshments. They're all smiling, conversing, and serving cake to each other. None for me, thank you. Watching the blood sugar? Fuck me, this cake is, this cake is amaze balls. All we need now is some rockin' tunes to get this party on the next level. All of them here to support me. Even without the funplex. Even after everything going wrong. After Francine being taken from us too soon. I didn't, my, my speech was specifically about her not being taken from us too soon. I'd never really thought of myself as central in all this. I was the outsider at first. The one who walked in those doors looking for a job, nothing more. I've always been on the outside, honestly. Moving from town to town, always the new kid. Never really important to anyone, not until I'd settled in one place just long enough to get to know Juniper. But by then, I'd come to expect that I'd never be happy. And when I finally was happy, that got and that got taken away. Well, I guess I'd assume that's how things go. Going with the flow. But now... No. No, I refuse to give up. We're gonna light that man's dick on fire. With, like, actual fire. Cocktail party, you bring the rags, I'll bring the bottles. <laughs> right here, I've, I have everything I've ever wanted, whether I realized it or not. I've got friends, I've got love, I've got a legacy proven in their words. I can't mope and stew in my losses. I can't deny the power of what I accomplished, and I will not stop fighting for what I need in life. This game is not over. Angry get shit done! Yeah, I'll take a huge slice of that cake. Lots of icing. Who looks up when I speak, slightly confused by the declaration. So, I walk right up and claim my slice, on my own. Sorry, gang. I screwed up and I let this drag me down. Won't happen again. We're here to party, right? Let's party. Let's raise a glass high to all we've done together. Nobody can deny that we're an unstoppable force, with or without a fun plex. Who's with me? Smiles, all around. You know what? Feels good to be back. For the next hour or so, my sadness fades away, piece by piece. We share stories, many of which I'd never heard before, about the funplex and the shenanigans that went on around it. Surprisingly, Ben and Matt have the, spin, the, spin the most tales about Francine's exploits. They've been neighbors for decades. The so-called wake intervention gives us all a chance to heal and to bond. For all we've lost, and all we still have, we are still together. Despite one little problem, which nobody wants to talk about. The hour grows late, and we only have this place rented for the afternoon. You can feel in the air that unspoken worry. Will we see each other again? No doubt we can arrange more get-togethers, but they'd all be reunions over what was lost, not really building anything new. Nostalgia, not progress. 
Oh, please tell me, like, the teen we talked to ends up coming back to play Moopy later on. Without the funplex, without Francine, will we eventually simply fall away? The dark little thought troubles me as I swirl my drink, remaining quiet while the others beep, talk. Beep. Uh, hey, Iris, what's up? Glad you're feeling better. Yeah, me too. I'm glad too. So, do you want me to start finding you a new job? I can search while you're talking w with your friends. No problem. I do need to get back to living my life. What sort of life do I want to live? I want my dream back. I don't just want a new job. I want my dream. My funplex. Not just four walls and a bunch of games, but a community. When I was a lifeguard, I'd save lives. I made a safe place for people to enjoy the pool with friends. I'm not done with that dream. And more importantly, I don't have to be done with it. All around me are pioneers of this community, this culture. Technicians, designers, enthusiasts, investors, people with connections. And that's when the idea starts to form. Iris? Can you search for commercial spaces? Ones for lease or rent? Mm. Huh? Of course. I'm a literal search wizard. Why? Oh, I know. Oh, I think I get it. You're... I step away from my quiet corner and approach the group. I have to take back control over my dream. And that starts here. Okay. Why can't we open our new arcade? The crowd hushes when I grab their attention. I set my drink aside and step up to them. I'm serious about this. Why not? What's stopping us? In this room, I see all the resources and creativity needed to make it happen. There's no reason not to do it. Is it risky? Absolutely. I won't deny that. But I'd rather be take a reasonable risk than let all that we've accomplished go to waste. My mind's made up. I'm hoping to get a new arcade. If anyone wants to join me, you're welcome to. If not, get the f out. Hush falls over the crowd. Four two friends step up to join me. Certainly. Let's get started. Let's get started. No, no dire warnings about how impractical or unrealistic this, this idea is? No. Your reasoning is sound, and I want to be involved. Simple as that. Ha ha ha! Fire! Unyielding in the face of the storm, a will of iron, Hamza respects this and wishes to bask in your unending glory. You've got my thanks, both of you. Okay, this is no longer a Wigtervention, people. Now it's a conspiracy. A Wigtervenspiracy! Okay. It's a Wigtervenspiracy, sure. Why not? Uh, we settle her down around a table. A nice round one to discuss the future. I'm leading the show, but I don't take the spotlight. Not this time. We all have to work together to make this dream a reality. This is it. Next few decisions are going to be critical to shaping the future I have in my mind's eye. I'll need to choose very, very carefully, because there's no take backsies. Iris is looking for spaces we can use, but we're going to need money, obviously, and arcades are risky startups. I always respond to one of the many Nigerian princesses emailing, or princes emailing me emailing me amazing offers, but I'm thinking more traditional funding is safer. The way I see it, there's three people here who could foot the bill to get us off the ground. Hamza, you've got a tangle web of connections in the industry, access to games, and plenty of cash. And a free willing whimsy to spend Hamza it. Hamza must consider this. Hmm, Hamza is a man of resources indeed. Percy, you've been building a charity war chest for when you pass. I know arca an arcade isn't a sound investment and it's hardly, in a, hardly a charity, but... You promised me Mr. Moopy would always have a home. If I could help restore that home, I'm game, love. Ben and Matt, you two know how to run a small business. You've got valuable knowledge from and resources we could draw from if you're willing to dip a toe in this industry. We have been looking for more to our, for New Horizons to conquer. New lands to explore. There would be caveats. Terms. Conditions. Exemptions. Rules. Guidelines. Best practices. Worst practices. That's not a thing. Oh. <laughs> it should be. Hamza would likewise have conditions. Okay, th this probably affects like what sort of arcade you have at the end. As would I. Understandable, of course. Let me hear your thoughts, then I'll decide. Okay, we, we actually get to... You're not going in blind. Thank crap. <laughs> Decision one, funding and direction. In order for me to back your play, uh, Hamza would require you to strike at the very heart of Dekonami's empire. I'm kind of all about that. And to open the family restaurant alongside your arcade. Take from him the very business he adores so much. I don't want to deal with people, though. Uh, we don't know the first thing about running a restaurant. Thankfully, your business partner does. I own several restaurants. I would provide staffing and the resources. No risk, no reward. 
Now, this is a risky play, but if it succeeds, the rewards shall be tremendous. Actually, that's similar to what Matt and I had in mind. Oh, yes, but instead of rather a restaurant, well, we'd like to open a barcade. Oh, I'm kind of on board with the barcade idea. I've always wanted to run a bar. I'd raise a glass to that idea. After all, sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And they're always glad you came. Now, it wouldn't be nearly as large scale as a family restaurant. Much safer. Not quite as profitable, but still quite tidy. Hmm. Honestly, I'd prefer if you simply ran a video arcade and nothing more. Adding on extra seems like a recipe for failure. We know how to operate a simple small scale arcade, so why not stick with our strengths? Mm -hmm. I'll grant it has a lower ceiling for success than the others. It's just an arcade. And won't pull in anyone looking for more. Low risk, low reward. But I'd say that would be my condition. We need to stick to the basics. Alright, um... I'm feeling Barcade, though. Okay, we're going by gut, and bar like a Barcade is something I would try to run. Uh, this decision is going to affect the entire direction of the new venture. What do I want? What's my dream? Who doesn't like getting their drank on, like Donkey Kong? Let's open a Barcade. Smashing. We'll take it to the bar side of things. And you can do what you do best, wrangling games. Hamza admits to disappointment, but cannot defy your iron will. Not sure movies will find fit for a barcade, but barcades do bring in nostalgic adult players. Certainly some of them will rediscover movie and fall in love again. Alright, everybody's relatively happy. Okay, second thing we need to talk about is what sort of games we want. Complex try to do a little bit of everything, and we should too. We want to include all gamers. We can also tilt we can also tilt our focus towards one style of player or another. Really provide best in class gaming for a specific audience. Any thoughts? Uh, this is probably gonna be Naomi, Teo, and Queen V weighing in. Yep. Sweet. Almost. Or maybe two different teams. Retro games. It's gotta be all about retro games. You know I'm capable of keeping those older games in tip top shape. We keep if we focused on retro games, we could serve an audience that Decas is complete Deca is completely ignoring. I would agree with Miss Fairchild. Retro games are an untapped market. I'll grant it wouldn't pull in as much profit, but we know gamers are seeking them. We don't have to make all the money, just enough to keep our pure and untainted dream afloat. And we can do that with a well-curated retro game library. Nope. No way. As much as I want, like, the racing games and whatnot, like, it's... I'm probably gonna go the Naomi... Uh, we were already on the Naomi route. We're way on the Naomi route, so... We might as well, you know work with, like, the tech that we have. Retro's cool and all, but let's talk about eSports games. They'll draw money better than jamming a magnet up your ass and dragging you through Fort Knox. Um, ma'am, gold's not magnetic. Get a couple good fighters, more than one FOD, uh, some brace and dance games. The kind of stuff where folks can compete head-to-head, -head, and we're golden. I have to agree with Queen Bee. You play retro games on emulators and consoles, but you can't duplicate the community experience of an arcade at home. You also can't duplicate proper controls most of the time on an emulator at home. <laughs> we had an esports focus, we could build something together, which works as a second home for all sorts of gamers. I think you know what I'm going to suggest. Redemption and prize games. They provide excellent profits. Hmm. It's the core of Deco's business model, yes, but I think if we focus on those games, we can do them right. No predatory pricing, no scams or rip-offs. And the truth is, most people want to, uh, people enjoy them, from kids wanting to win that big prize to the wistful dolls recapturing their childhood dreams playing skee-ball on the boardwalk. Yes! They're simple to play and, most of all, fun. If done right, we can make meaningful memories for everyone. Like, I would probably do that. Like, I would basically just steal Deco's model and try to do it better if I did the, uh, the Hamsa route. Let's go all in. And prizes! Did I mention the prizes? We can stock the shelves with the coolest prizes around. Better than Deco's prizes, which fall apart two minutes after you get them. Which matches which matches my ideal arcade more. We'll have all three, sure, but do we emphasize retro games, esports, or prize games? That I don't want drunks uh, making a like, yeah, yeah. Competition and alcohol do not mix. We're going retro. Deco thinks that only new games make money. Let's prove them wrong and have the world's greatest retro-style arcade ever. Woohoo, I'll pick out only the best games, don't worry. Excellent, I'm looking forward to this project. Okay, so that's money and games. Now let's go beyond what we already had at the Funplex. Really make this something special. New projects. I want a defining feature for our arcade, one which will make it stand out. Something nobody else is doing, something nobody's even thought of before. 
Get me a wing war. <laughs> All ideas on the table. If it was too outlandish for the funplex, it's not too outlandish for me. Show me what you got. Well, um, I mean, I'm not really part of this, but... Come on, you're my best friend and 100% part of this. I couldn't be here this moment if it wasn't for you. Go on, Juniper. What's your idea? Branding. I'm freelancing now, which means you, you, I could come on board as your personal brand manager. One heck of a consulting gig. Arcade needs a really stellar image management. Needs really stellar image management. I can't... I'm like out of beverages and out of awakeness, so it's all falling apart. Excuse me. An arcade needs really stellage. St stellage. An arcade. Uh, we will get the sentence right at least once tonight. An arcade needs really stellar image management to stand out from the rest. Like the event poster I made for you. What if? What if? Oh, hey, Juniper. I can add to that. What if we work together? I was thinking of designing a new mascot costume anyway. But I could collaborate and coordinate with you on how it'll tie into the visuals for the rest of the arcade. Yeah. Yeah, it's a winning combination. Ashley and I can do great work together coming up with some really stellar branding and marketing. We'll stand out in a crowd. I'm kind of feeling that. Oh, but I'm also all about streamer support. Hell, I know exactly what sort of project I'd want us to do. Streamer support. Assembling and packing away my streaming rig each day is ridiculous. And duct taping a webcam in front of in front of a screen is a lousy hack. If I could just step up... If I could just step right up to a game and, I don't know, swipe a card or something, and be streaming with direct feed in seconds? Well, I can feel it, think of a dozen streamers who just flock to our place and get to get a piece of that. Yeah! Actually, I think... I know how we could do that. I could bring up a general purpose daughter board which plays man in the middle with a video feed, works with an RFAD reader to get the streamer's info. As do a central video encoder on the Wi-Fi network. Yeah, I can make that happen. Without damaging any classic hardware. Uh, once more in English, please. I know software, not hardware. We stick a thingy in the thingy and everything works just fine. I'm sure there's some legal and copyright issues to tackle, but if we can do it, let's be the first world's first streaming arcade. I like that. I was thinking about well, if the reason why older games are considered dead end is they that they don't work in the ticket game ecosystem. Lovely. Why not add ticket output to normal games? We could re reward skilled players with prize tickets based on their high score or speed of completion. With the right balancing, we could make our make old games just as desirable as the new ones. Perhaps. As Naomi said, there may be legal hurdles to clear, but I'm in favor of this idea. Not that I love prize games, I find them boring personally. You know I favor pinball. But profit is the lifeblood of an arcade, and prize games are profitable. When we get movie producing tickets, well, that's something no, nobody has ever done before. Actually, do we want to have really good branding or streamer support? Like, I want the branding as well, but a priority is going to be streamer support. That way you get that mix of old and new. I'm going to be on the cutting edge of technology in our, the arcade community. Do whatever you have to to integrate 20XDX broadcast systems into our games. Finally! No more hauling around a bunch of duct tape and webcams. I mean, you can keep hauling around the duct tape. There's other things you can do with that. Um, a new tech project, and not just repairing an old monitor? Yeah, you won't regret this, Nako. One more thing. The name. Oh. This is going to be my baby. My dream arcade? I've got a name already in mind for it. So, barring any objections, I'd like to welcome you all to 30 characters. Okay. We go with the title of the game, but no. Fuegos Boncheros, is that right? I'll leave it. Fuegos Boncheros. Let's call it Wagos Mancheros. Wagos Mancheros. I like it. We can work with that. Let's hear it for Wagos Mancheros. Oh, my home lives again. How exciting. Yeah. Post that. One by one, everyone raises their glasses. I fetch my room temperature drink and raise mine high in turn. This is the most me. <laughs> the party, right? Let's all get blind drunk and celebrate. Jin makes a man mean. Everyone boos up and riot. The Wiggles Buncheros and the future. That chapter turned out a little longer than I thought too, but... Losing everything and getting all back. And then some. It's been a roller coaster for a week, to be sure. I can't rest now. Absolutely not. I need to take charge of this project and my life in general. 
I have to do for them what Francine did for us. Okay, I'm ready. I'm willing. And this is our time. Watch it up! Okay. Six. You're proving to be a gentle, sweet, and compassionate soul. So nothing changed. Also, you've scored 20,000 points. Woohoo! Cops of the volcano devastated city of Pompeii bear the characteristics of a pizzeria. That's a neat, if a bit depressing, pizza fact just for you. <laughs> Way to bookend. They're like, everything goes to hell, and then everything's all cool again. Also, dead people, pizza. Thanks. Thanks. You want to save your game before proceeding to level seven? Absolutely. And we're going to cut it there.